In this video, I'm going to show a workflow for creating a human figure, posing it into a position that you like, and then getting it ready for 3D printing. Now your starting point for any of this is to get a human figure. And in a previous video, which I'll link below, I have shown three different ways of getting a human figure. And in this video, I'm going to use the figure created by Charmolf. The reason for this is that in order to pose a figure, you need to create a rig. And the rig created by Charmolf, which is called Rigify, is the best one for this. MB Lab does have a Rigify add-on, but that is another add-on you have to add, and I haven't tried it. And then you have Make Human. That doesn't have Rigify at all, although it does have a broken and non-functioning Rigify in the version 2 alpha, but it's not usable. Now you can see I've already created a model. I'm not going to show you how to do that in charm off because I have put that in my previous video linked below. Now you might notice that this model has a particularly fetching set of underwear on. The reason for this is because YouTube prefers it that way. Now you do this by having adult mode turned off in charm off and I don't recommend you're going to do this if you are 3D printing. Partly because it's a bit silly but also because the resulting model is not manifold and won't print without a lot of cleaning up. Okay, in principle, all we're going to do is give this model a skeleton or a rig, and then we're going to move that rig, and then we're probably going to have to do a little bit of sculpting just to clean up any untidy areas. This might not be necessary, but I'm going to include that in this video because it is often useful. You might also notice that behind my model is a chair, which I have created earlier, and we're going to get Antonia, she's called, to sit on this chair in some kind of useful looking pose. Now, two things before we start. Firstly, Charm Off creates eyelashes, and they won't print. So the first thing I will do is actually to remove those by selecting her going into modifiers and applying the eyelashes and then they go. Don't change any of the other modifiers. Now as I said before we may do a little bit of sculpting at the end. Very simple sculpting, Don't be, it's nothing to be scared of. Um, and I want to do something to this model to prepare it to make that sculpting a lot easier. We're going to add face sets and I will describe what a face set is briefly as well. But before we do that, we need to give some resolution to the model. I'm going to do that simply with a multi-resolution modifier, not a subdivision modifier. The multi-res is much better for sculpting. I'm just going to subdivide this once. Could do it twice, but let's do it twice. Let's go around. Takes a bit of a moment, and we have two subdivisions. So we're now going to go into sculpt mode. And here we are. Now all we're going to do is go down to the draw face sets. Now just move the mouse over a leg and press shift W. You can see that it's drawing but it goes a bit too far. It's going onto the other leg. What I want to do is have this red just going up one leg. If I press 2 while I'm doing it, it follows the topology. And we take that up there. So we have one leg there. And we move to the other leg. Shift W. And we do it again. The colours that you have may be different than the colours here. And look, it's going onto the other leg again. So press 2. Go up there. Okay. The colours are selected randomly, which is why yours might be different than what I have here. If we have a look at the back, we didn't do it all the way, so we will fix that. And the way you extend a face set is to have your mouse over it, over the one face set that you want to extend. 
then you press control and then you draw the rest of it in okay we don't need to be as precise as this for this model i don't think but it's good experience anyway and then hover over the other face set control and we can fill it out a bit like that now it's worth knowing that that the bit that I haven't got a face set on is actually a face set so if I wanted to rub this out I would hold the mouse here then hold the control key and go the other direction but I did one up there and we will do the arms as well we don't think we have to be so clever with this one mouse over one arm shift W probably don't need the two for this right and the other one shift W okay we have face sets for the arms and legs the reason for this is because these are the bits that are most likely to get pinched up or screwed up a little bit by the posing and this will make sculpting them better afterwards you will see anyway these are a little bit ragged so what I'd like to do is smooth these lines out simple way to do that let's go down to here which is the mesh filter select that change it from inflate to relax face sets and then all you do is drag your mouse across the screen and you'll see that they start to get less ragged you can do it again if you want it better than that yeah, that will do okay so now we are ready to actually move forward with this model let's go back into object mode and turn the multi-res off don't delete it because we'll need it again later probably so turn it off here this will just make the next stage quicker now as I said this is a Charmor model but it hasn't been finalized so we need to click on Charmorph and then scroll down to your finalize button and finalize it might take a moment but there we have the rig now I don't want to make this sound complicated but this rig which is all these yellow lines is actually two rigs there is a subtle difference between the two of them one is much easier for moving parts around moving arms and legs and having the rest of the body follow it uh, the other one is better for precise control which only moves individual bones and things that are connected to it now the two rigs have different names one is called FK forward kinematics I think that is and the other one is called IK which is inverse kinematics and they are very very easy to mix up the only way I can think of it is that IK is intelligent in that it allows the whole model to move when you just move a hand for example FK isn't and I can't think what F stands for I for intelligent F for I don't know whatever it's not I maybe I should shut up and just start posing this thing this is the rig you select the rig in object mode and then you go to pose mode up here that's a little easier to see now these green things they are the FK rig or the non intelligent rig the other bits are part of the IK or intelligent rig and perhaps we can see if I grab that bit which is part of the IK I just use normal blender keys G for grab I can do nothing grab let me see or this this was a better example grab that bone move it you can see the whole model moves around that is IK anyway we don't want to do that now for posing I find using these is actually the best way forward okay because it you move things in the correct plane then but I'm going to put it on this chair so let's go to the side select that press G and there we go now you might notice 
that the IK or the intelligent parts have all moved but the green bit there's which is the other rig the FK rig is still where it was doesn't matter the model is in the right place now let's have a look at the front let's grab that I'm just going to grab it along the X move the leg there now this looks a little bit bent and I do happen to know if I select that and use R for rotate instead See, move the leg, it rotates that hip a little bit. And now I'll grab the other leg. Oop, move it over there. Okay. Now if you look closely, the foot doesn't look right, so I'll rotate that. I look from the side, looks a bit weird. I would rotate that a bit more. And maybe grab it like that. Maybe you can move it forward a little bit and move that one forward. As well. It's basically going to be trying different bones and seeing what they do. I grab that one for example and rotate it I know will give me a little bit of a hip which is quite nice I think if I check behind it's possibly a bit too much so I'll just grab the whole thing and move it over and just plonk it down there a bit okay it's not too bad I think I'll raise this up a bit okay so there you have it and then we'll take the arms. Very smart. That's the IK rig for the arms. Just grab it, bring it down. Grab that one as well. What I do is it. Let's do something like rotate this. there I grab it let's put it there and rotate whoops wrong bit that one rotate we have a slight problem there but a hand is more or less in the right place it's, what, it's not ideal is it but it'll do okay now it's actually good because it shows that we have we've managed to move our hand in the right place but this is a good time to start looking at the FK rig the green bits which are stick, still sticking out where they were to start with now we're using Rigify if we click on the item while we're in pose mode oops, you see all this Rigify stuff here but you can turn bits off that you don't want to see for example I recommend just playing with these Okay, so the first thing we need to do, if we're going to use this, the FK rig, for our fine tuning, if you like, is we have to snap this rig to the IK rig. So it's FK to IK, the little magnet, magnet there, the FK will now match the IK. Click, bang, there it goes. Only on the bit that we're selecting. Slightly annoying, you used to be able to do the whole model, but I'm just doing that bit. Now they're snapped together. Then we have to, <laughs> this is, seems a bit more complicated than it is, we have to make the IK follow the FK. Okay. I'm going to rotate that. You can see, let's move that out. Let me take that one and rotate it back in again. Right, and we can take that and rotate. Now, for fine grain control, it's actually much easier than using FK. But for just getting in the original pose, then uh, the IK is better. 
But let's say we want to go back to FK. We now have to snap the IK to the FK. The IK being our intelligent rig. Snap there. And then we have to turn that down again. Okay. Now we're back using FK. I think. Let's just check. Grab that bit of FK. Grab it. Yep. Okay. So with this hand, I'm just going to rotate. Where did it go? It's there. Rotate. That would just bring it up because that looks a bit odd. And rotate. We have a pose. And you could just leave it at that. But if we go into object mode now and turn off the rig, we can do that by just turning off this in the outliner. It looks kind of okay. I don't like this though, and this is where a bit of sculpting will come in handy. And this is why we did our face sets at the beginning. I'll show. If you click on this. The multi-res that we used before and turned off is still there. There's lots of other stuff too, but the multi-res is still there. We just turn it back on again now, because we're sculpting. If we go into sculpt mode, the face sets are still there, which is very handy. Now, I'm going to use the snake brush here and show what I mean with the face sets. If I grab that, and let's just let's see how everything is affected. That's really annoying. Make it smaller. I just want to pull, but then it pulls all that. That's just not good enough. But if I go into brushes, advanced, face sets, and face sets boundary. Now the brushes only work on the face set that I started with. So if I start on this red bit, it only moves the red bit. Isn't that great? And then I can move this over here. And then just smooth that off a bit. That's got a bit mad. Okay, and then I know that this tends to make a bulge here for some reason. Bring a leg down. Oops. I need my finger down. Smooth. And this is probably okay. If I go back into object mode. It looks a little bit better, I think. A little less weird. Okay, so that is basically a workflow for creating a model, posing it, and getting it ready for printing. Now, you could just export this model as it is, but in some circumstances, you want to apply all the modifiers that Charmorph has created. And if you just go through and apply these, it will ruin your model. So the way to do it is to select everything. You won't have the underwear on, but I'm going to have to put to do this. Select everything. Object. Convert to mesh. Now it already is a mesh, but this will apply all the modifiers without breaking your model. Take a moment. There we have it. This is now a 3D printable model. I hope that's helpful. I know it sounded a little bit weird. It, well, it seems a little bit weird. Um, but if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll probably answer them. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again. Bye.